If you have to roll a 2 plus to charge, don't roll a 1. Hey guys, what's up? 2 plus charge here. And today, I'm going to rank the 100 Kingdom characters based on their dueling abilities only. The first army I'm going to start with is the 100 Kingdoms. The objective criteria that I'm going to use to rank the characters is based on their numerical advantages. And then I had the characters fight each other over and over and over again to see which character is the best, which characters are the middling, and which characters are the worst in each faction. Later on, once every faction has been ranked, I will then pit the top ranking characters in each faction against each other, and we will see how good 100 Kingdom fares in dueling. The first character we're going to rank is the Chapter Mage. Where will the Chapter Mage go? Well, as you can see here, the Chapter Mage has no combat retinue, and her stats are horrible for dueling. Clash 1, Resolve 2, Defense 1, Evasion 0, which means the Chapter Mage strictly goes in the D tier. You're gonna find a theme running along all these army rankings. If you are a caster, to the bottom you go, okay? Let's check out the next caster, the Theist Priest. The Theist Priest has no combat retinue. Oh wait, the Theist Priest does. If you give him the tier two combat retinue, we'll give him plus one attacks. Wow, that's awesome. Meaning he's now clash two, attack five, resolve two, defense two, evasion zero. He has five wounds, interestingly enough. If you go into his masteries, none of the arcane abilities are going to benefit him in duels. And pretty much the best combat mastery you'll find amongst most hundred kingdom characters is disorienting strikes. Where the enemy character stand will subtract one from their clash characteristic. Which is better than the more expensive exposed weakness. Why? Because... Expose weakness has an effect where the enemy character stands cannot ignore or reduce the number of hits suffered from this character stand. Expose weakness is situational. Disorienting strikes works in every single situation. So if you were to use disorienting strikes in a duel against literally every character in the game, it will always work. While expose weakness being situational will only work against characters who have abilities which will ignore or reduce the number of hits suffered from this character stand. So if you are playing a specific opponent, a specific player, in a specific meta, then you might go expose weakness going into that game because you know your friend is going to take a specific character with some ability to ignore your, uh, your hits. But if you're going into a tournament or you're just playing randomly or you're not really that deep into finding out what your opponent is going to be bringing to a game. Disorienting Strikes is the mastery of choice for 100 Kingdom characters. But overall, even with Disorienting Strikes, the Heirlooms are not going to help this character out that much. And the Theist Priest is a character that can fight slightly better than the Chapter Mage. Say we give the Theist Priest Khaled Burn. This character stand may reroll failed hit rolls during a dual action. And the opposing enemy character stand must reroll successful defense rolls. That's actually pretty good. The only other weapon that's usable in duels is the Flesh Cleaver that costs the same amount of points. The Flesh Cleaver gives the character stand Fiend Hunter and Deadly Blade special rules. All you really care about is Deadly Blades since you won't be dueling Brutes that much. And Deadly Blades lets you have the opponent take two wounds whenever they roll a defense roll of six instead of one wound. Khaled Burn statistically is better than Flesh Cleaver. So let's say we give the Theus Priest Khaled Burn. Now you have a Clash 2, Attack 5, Defense 2, 5 wound character. The Theus Priest is 165 points for this really bad, really bad duelist. Now, yes, the Theus Priest does duel better than the Chapter Mage, but it's still a caster, and it's 165 points of just pure garbage. So we're going to keep the Theus Priest higher than the Chapter Mage, but still in D tier. Next, we'll go into the Imperial Officer. The Imperial Officer, unfortunately, is a supporting character, unfortunately, in the context of duels. You can give him two combats. Give him a mastery of disorienting strikes. You can give the Imperial Officer battlefield drills, and the only one that matters for duels will be drill number one, because 
This regiment, this character stand is currently attached to gains the Bastion draw event and may resolve two draw events during its activation. So if you were to stick the Imperial officer in a regiment like the Gilded Legion or, well, pretty much anything, Steel Legion, the regiment would activate first, the Imperial officer would gain the plus one defense from Bastion, then the Imperial officer's defense becomes a four. Or you can just stick him in a Gilded Legion regiment with the seasoned veterans officer for him to gain the Bastion anyway. Either way, he becomes defense four. As for an heirloom, you'd either give him the Flesh Cleaver or Khaled Burn. We'll go with Khaled Burn for now. Now you have a Imperial Officer with Clash two, Attacks five, Wounds five, Resolve three, Defense four, after you got your Bastion buff from the regiment he is in. All in all, an okay dueling character against other dueling characters, but the Imperial Officer is more of a buffing character than a dueling character, which means we're going to give him a C because he can whoop on the casters and that's pretty much it. Next, we'll hop over to the Mounted Noble Lord. Where will this guy go? The Mounted Noble Lord actually starts off with pretty decent stats for 100 Kingdoms. Clash 3, Attacks 5, Wounds 5, Resolve 3, and Defense 3. The issue is that the Mounted Noble Lord cannot have a retinue, which means you're pretty much stuck with disorienting strikes for his mastery and as for his weapon arts you could either give him weapon master or relentless forget about powerful physique and duelist they're just not going to do it for you here funnily enough the word duelist in this ability is not good for a duelist because it gives you the parry special rules all hit rolls of one made against a regiment with this special character during a clash or duel action must be re-rolled. Kind of interesting because when you're in a duel the characters are fighting not regiments so I, I don't even know how parry works in a duel, but even in a duel, let's say a the parry actually works. Who cares about rerolling ones made against the mounted noble lord? Relentless gives you flurry, and weapon master gives you cleave. So it depends on whether you're trying to cleave away defense or get rerolls with flurries. So we're stuck with relentless and weapon master. We're gonna give him weapon master to give him the cleave one special rule because when we give him the weapon of Khaled Burn, he gets to re-roll his failed hits. So you don't need flurry. So now he's cleave one with re-rolling his failed hits. And with his disorienting strike, he actually makes a decent dueling character. But that's pretty much it. He is as average as you can get for a dueling character in 100 Kingdoms. He does have defense four with his shield. If you're dueling in the front, not the side which is actually pretty okay. All of that makes the Mounted Lord a solid B. All of that makes the Mounted Noble Lord a solid B. He can whoop on the Imperial Officer's butt. Let's take a look at the Priori Commander. The Priori Commander has Clash 4, Attacks 5, Wounds 6, Resolve 4, Defense 4. I know he's missing a lot of upgrades here, but it's as if you've taken whatever buffing upgrades you would get and just bake them into his points and still just keep him at 110 points, which is pretty good. And once per game, preferably when you're dueling, if the Priori Commander is your Warlord, he can give himself Blessed for one round, meaning he'll re-roll his attacks while dueling. And as for Mastery, if you're going to re-roll your attacks while dueling, you might as well lower the Clash characteristic of your opponent, Disorienting Strikes. Now, if he had access to the Tactical Masteries, the Tactical mastery of eccentric fighting style would work, but you need a tactical retinue of one. So you will not be getting plus two to your attacks. But once again, giving him disorienting strikes, it's assumed that the extra attacks, those two that you see here for A is a six, they're kind of baked in. The Priori Commander is actually pretty decent, but against a Mounted Noble Lord with Cleave 1 rerolling hits, the P Mounted Noble Lord just barely ekes out, which means the Priori Commander for the Crimson Tower is just below the Mounted Noble Lord. And then last, we have a Noble Lord on foot. The Noble Lord is a little blender for 100 Kingdoms. We go ahead and give him a combat retinue of three right off the bat. For Masteries, we'll give him Disorienting Strikes to drop the Clash characteristic of our opponent down. As far as Heirlooms are concerned, we can go ahead and give him Khaled Burn so he can re-roll his attacks and force the enemy stand to re-roll their defenses. And for Weapon Arts, we'll give him Cleave 1 through Weapon Master. It does make him a little pricey at 160, but 
He is the best dueling character for 100 Kingdoms. The main difference between the Mounted Noble Lord and the Noble Lord is that the Noble Lord can take a retinue. The Mountain... Mounted... The Mounted... Mounted... The Mounted Noble Lord cannot. Which actually raises the Noble Lord's clash up to four and if you made the noble lord your warlord you would have the best of men and the best of men will allow you to re-roll unmodified sixes we're making defense rolls now you will not get the effect of the second part of the best of men because that specifically says during a clash action but the first part you will get so the noble lord just edges out the mounted noble lord making him an a tier duelist in the game but 100 kingdoms have no s tiers and the noble lord just barely makes it into a tier so let me know what you guys think about the tier list here the next dueling character tier list is going to be spires and remember when you need a, and remember when you need a two plus to duel don't roll a disorienting strike Because I do declare I make the best fried chicken in here.